Welcome to this week's EMBN show. I'm joined by Neil. Got loads of cool stuff coming up this week. We're talking about the ups and downs of e-mountain biking. Plus some new bikes coming from Trek and Norco this week. Yeah, we've got a massive tool giveaway coming up from Park Tools, so stick around. It's gonna be an excellent show. Right now, Neil, we all know that e-mountain biking is amazing, right? It's good. And our first impressions, like you rode e-bikes how many years ago? Yeah, I don't know, it was probably three or four years ago now, I went on a, a Scott bike launch right. to check out the new trail bike, yeah. and uh, Brendan Fairclough was there. Right. We were more interested in getting out in the mornings on the uh, e-bikes, okay. going out for quick blast, and yeah. just doing everything, an hour and a half, around Tuscany, bombing up, doing the trails. Really? Yeah, it was amazing. What about you? Um, well, the first time I experienced an e-bike was when I signed for Cannondale. They were just bringing out their Matera bikes, and um, I sort of big promise to the marketing manager that, yeah, yeah, I want to ride e-bikes this year. I actually got on it, and I struggled like hell first thing. I was like, this thing's so heavy, it doesn't jump, it rolls really slow. It's like, how the hell am I going to ride this? But so that's quite funny. You, well, you were a pro riding their mountain bikes, yeah. free ride, and yeah. then what, you decided you want to ride their e-bikes, or they were trying to push the e-bikes? They were pushing the e-bikes, and I saw it as like a cool kind of cross over, you know, I was doing a lot of motorbike trials, these sort of stuff, and I thought, wow, like a mountain, a mountain bike with a motor, I was like, cool, this could be the, you know, the, the ultimate thing to be riding out in yeah. the woods. And I got on it, and I was just like blasting up hill climbs, you know, doing loads of trials, these stuff, and the amount of laps I could get in was just like a massive eye opener. Yeah, totally. And I think that feeling when you click it into boost mode, that is something you don't forget, right? Yeah, it's funny, I came away from that morning riding with Brendan, I was like, I, I need one of these, and Brendan didn't want to get one, because he yeah. knew that he would never ride his, his other bike again. <laughs> but he has got one man, he rides yeah. it all the time. <laughs> he knows he's flat out on it. But let's take a look at the different disciplines, you know, of the styles of riding. Like I do a lot of jumping on my bike and sort of the pluses for that is obviously how stable it is in the air and the speed you can actually come into stuff. And I think the preload that you can get into the weight of the bike, you know, you can yeah. hit jumps way slower. I think I was like overshooting stuff that I'd go into on a normal bike. I'd just overshoot it on an e-bike, you know, which your... feels to me like they're harder to get a jump wrong on mm. an e-bike just because the momentum of the thing. Yeah. yeah. I've got a Kinevo that I use as my down on bike mm -hmm. that I just shuttle up and down yeah. on and blast around the woods. Mm -hmm. Also, well, I use it for everything. I use it as a commuter. I use yeah. it to take my son up to nursery on the yeah. front ride. You right, know, it goes yeah, on the front. Yeah. And in we live, well, I live in Bath, where it's super steep hills. So you just couldn't really do it on a non e bike. Yeah, yeah. I think going back to the jumping side of it, things I struggled with was like the rotational tricks when you're doing like 360s and stuff. I actually, I think I was the first person to do one in the yeah. UK, believe it or not, before Sam Pilgrim. Yeah, I was like working on it, over rotating, under rotating. It's just the weight once you get it on that sort of axis. Did you bend many wheels doing that? Did like a 400, yeah, like over rotated, <laughs> but snap back. For sure, I thought I was going to see the swing arm come around in front of me, but it snapped back round. A few crashes, but it was just those tricks were a little more harder. And I think, I think crashing on an e-bike was like eating components as well, like trashing back wheels. Yeah, a few of them bending bars and bending cranks and yeah. overshooting. I think I got the biggest burn on my ass the day overshooting this massive <laughs> step down, landed to flat about 25 foot, and that back tire bit me pretty hard yeah. between my cheeks. I mean, the, the one, the big disadvantage for me is mm. I like working on my bikes, and if something goes wrong, yeah. I've had it recently where I can't fix it. Mm. That is the, the only real disadvantage yeah. to me, I think. And that kind of annoys me that mm. I can't just get my tools out and always yeah. fix it. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it's like those new school cars. You've got loads of people like two yeah, on cars, totally. can't get the spanners out, and they feel a bit of a loss. But yeah, that is a big down point and you, as you mentioned about kids you know taking your kids on e-bike rides i've done like 25 30 mile rides with my kid on the handlebars and he's loved every minute and you don't even notice they're there do you yeah, totally. you know, like riding around and the only screams i get is like daddy do a wheelie or yeah so totally. slow down mm. but it'd be great to see what you guys get up to on your e-bikes drop some in the comments box below mm. let us know what you've been up to on your e-bikes the ups and downs of e-biking the great news for you guys is a competition giveaway and Park Tools have been really good to us and they've given us a whole tool kit. You've got a cleaning kit, you've got a Torx key set and an advanced mechanics tool set as well. Just check all the tools out in here. Literally everything you're gonna need for working on your e-bike important bottle openers, screwdrivers, tire levers, adjustable spanners, cable cutters, literally full of amazing kit. So if you guys want to get involved and learn how to win all this stuff, details are going to be down below the video. So click that and get involved. You could be winning this amazing toolkit. 
So the dust of Eurobike has settled, but there's more new bikes on the way, right? Yeah, check out this new one from Norco. It's the wow. Range VLT. It's one hell of a big hitter. 170 mil on the rear with a uh, coil shock, nice. 180 up front. Yeah. Looks long, looks kind of like a new school mountain bike. Does, long, slack, uh, yeah. really super steep uh, seat angle. For the climbs and stuff. I guess that's going to work really well yeah. on a, an e-bike where you're trying to winch yourself back mm -hmm. up to the top of these downhills. Yeah, because you're not going to be sat down on the downhills, are you? It's all about getting long, low slack. And as you say, big steep seat angle is going to sit you up there for the drive. Got Shimano Steps motor on there, two choices of batteries. You know, it does look like an amazing bike coming from Norco. 27.5, mm -hmm. yeah, enduro bike. Uh, also, Trek got the, the new rail yeah, uh, up to, good. it's in the 9.9 .9 version, mm -hmm. comes with a SRAM access. So, thing. four wireless gears. Mm -hmm. You've got the Bosch computer just on your top tube. Yeah. It looks like one hell of a bike, but it comes at a price. I bet. Nine and a half thousand pounds. What about the Trek Rail 5? Is that the base model as well? That comes in a little bit cheaper. What's the price on that one? Uh, yeah, that is down to 3,750, all British pounds. So that's Pretty not good. so bad. Yeah, yeah. 150 mil travel, uh -huh. uh, 29ers. And what about the hardtails as well? They're launching a new hardtail range as well, aren't they? That's the... it. Powerfly hardtail, yeah. uh, cross country bike, ranging from 2,550 for the Powerfly well, 4. Good price point. Again, with the Generation 4 Bosch motor. Nice. Yeah. Now, one of the questions we get asked here on EMBN is when are e-bike frame sets going to be available? So it's just literally a frame that you bolt your own kit on. And it looks like Specialized have been listening and they've launched a Levo frame. Sadly, not available in the UK. It's Europe only. Well, Germany at the moment. Yeah. Uh, looks good. I mean, right? it's kind of surprising. Is this the first frame set we've seen in an e-bike manufacturer? Well, we've got Foes are doing an e-bike frame okay. set, but it hasn't actually been released yet as far as I'm aware. So this is the first one. The Levo is the S-Works. Uh, so top of the range carbon, 700 yeah. watt hour. I and mean, it's interesting because I think, you know, e-bike companies like to spec the bike yeah. with the e-bike specific fork yeah. and t sort of tell you what you should be running, whereas yeah. now you can literally build the thing yourself. Exactly, or if you've got a standard trail bike, you can literally just swap your frame out and put your components on. So it could be a, quite a good price point to get in a high-end it's e not a cheap way of doing it. It's six thousand euro frame, is but it? I guess that's the twelve grand bike that you're buying yeah, yeah, frame yeah. from. Same as Steve Jones rides. Yeah, nice. <laughs> is that a selling point? <laughs> so we recently ran a competition where you guys could win one of the Ergon saddles, and if your name's on screen now, you are one of the lucky winners. So congrats to you all. One of our team will be in touch with you. Get your contact details, and those saddles should be under your bums very soon. Well, it's that time of the show, it's climb of the week. What have we got this week, Don? Uh, well, right, we start off in the UK mm -hmm. with Philip, who's riding his specialized Kinevo mm -hmm. in uh, Holford Woods. I don't know, it's a bit of Quantock Hill, so not yeah. a million miles away from here. Nice, looks like he's adopting the Steve Jones sat down technique, right? Doing it, that's not bad. Kinevo. Out there. 50, in the 50s as well. Yeah, riding with his wife, who's also got a Levo, so big uh, specialized fans. Nice, good work. Look at that. Doing it, nice one, mate. It. Next is. Uh, this is Clint mm -hmm. riding his 2018 Trek police electric bike. There's a police, so he's training some police officers up to ride bikes by the looks of it. Look at that. It's going up. Cool. On the hard tail, it's pretty cool going upstairs. It's good for chasing Steve Jones around when yeah. he's, you know, maybe on the wrong side of the law. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about pinch flats on that hard tail. It must be pretty hard to avoid with the weight of the bike going up there, but. What's he got on his uh, thing on the back? Sirens, I'd imagine. <laughs> <laughs> It's that time of the show where we get all ghetto, it's ghetto tech, and we've got these in. Well, this is uh, I mean, pretty interesting, right? Yeah, they are pretty ghetto this mm -hmm. week. This one's good. Marlo actually uh, made this for his grandmother, who needs an e bike, so it's a tricycle. Wow. We need to get one of these for Steve Jones as well. Sheepskin seat? What? Yeah, and he's just, look at that, bolted the, the battery on the back there. I can't really see where the motor goes. No, I can see. Oh, it's a front hub one, is it? A front hub motor no, by the looks I don't know. Like. I think that's like an old. Oh, maybe it is. Got dual caliper yeah. on the front brake as well by the looks of it. That is a machine. Motorcycle mirror. Okay, what? Well, you think that's good? Check this one out. This is uh, from <laughs> oh Sam. My God. In Lincolnshire, he's, well, well, I don't know why, he's got a trailer. Look at all the stuff that's on the back. Whoa, that's huge. Look at that motorbike top box. What's that for the battery, is it? So it's a DIY e-bike with a 4.3 kilowatt battery with a Whoa. rear hub motor. I got for 100 quid. <laughs> and then I got a trailer with all my camping gear. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going long rides to my favorite campsite or biking 400 miles. 400 miles, well, I think that must be a solid battery in the back I mean, of that. that has got to be a record for, mm -hmm. surely not in one go. I don't know. I mean, I think by the size of the battery that's possibly in those panniers and that top box, then. I mean, that is. And I think all those gadgets on the handlebar, we've got sat nav, um, oh, loads. Uh, everything, all the accessories, 4.3 kilowatt. What do you think to that saddle angle for pumping up the miles there? <laughs> See that? Don't know about that one. Why? 
Nice. Then. Nice. Keep yeah, sending totally them tight. in. Upload service is on the screen if you want to get your Get It Tech featured on the show. Where in the world this week? Uh, we've got a good selection. Starting right. off in Slovakia, mm. so Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. This has come from Matej, but actually it's uh, Adam, who's 15, uh, has taken out the test bike from the shop, the Rocky Mountain Altitude Powerplay 50, giving it one hell of an endo there. Look at that. Is it a stoppy or an endo? It's, it's, stoppy. it's like pretty it. big. That's it's almost cool, OTB it? territory there. Yeah, but nice. Like that out in the woods in Slovakia. That's cool. cool. This is a bit closer to EMBN home. This is in uh, Krynant in South Wales. South Wales. Uh, Christopher is out on his Merida E160-600. Yeah. Uh, it's his first e-bike. I'm on it more than my old standing bike. Uh, haven't got off to push it once. Nice. What about that dog? Is that a trail dog? Greyhound, is it? Is it a name? Greyhound, yeah. No, no, no. Nice. Fart really bad though, Greyhound. <laughs> Talking from experience. Dogs yeah. always do, any dog, surely. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, better South Wales, there's so much good stuff for e bikes. Yeah, like stuff. steep sided mm -hmm. valleys. Right, over to South America in Venezuela. America. We've got Andre riding uh, Carabobo State on his high bike, Extra or Mountain uh, 7.0. Uh, he's really enjoying riding in the north of Venezuela. Venezuela. Nice trails, nice views, and nice oh, adventure. It's crazy, got the e bike scene going on over there. Yeah, there. I cool. mean, there's a big scene in South America for sure for riding. Yeah, e uh, Back to Europe, we're in Montcherie, uh, Leger. Ah, oh, the Leger. home of World yeah. Cup Daniel Racing. Been there a couple of times? Been yeah. there before, though? Definitely raced there a few times. <laughs> Christopher is out here on his Turbo Levo. Uh, took a single track all the way from the bottom of the Montcherie uh, in 30 dry, 35 degree heat to the top, approximately 6,000 feet of climbing. Well, it sounds like a full on day. Be sweating that on a normal bike up there. There right? it is, he's at the top of the World Cup downhill course without nice. taking a lift. Oh, nice. nice. Love, yeah, I love seeing all your bikes here on Where in the World. Don't forget if you want to be on next week's show, use the upload service, get into the show. Mm -hmm. So we've got loads of cool content coming out on the channel this week. On Friday, we've got a really cool video, e-bike versus mountain bike. How much actual time do you save on the trails going up and down compared to a standard mountain bike? Nice, and at the weekend, we've got can you ride up a World Cup downhill track on an e-bike? And that is one of the toughest ones. That's Andorra, super gnarly, super technical. Can't wait to see that one. Yeah, looking forward to that for sure. Right, you ready, Don? It's the favourite part of the show for me. You like this? I do. I hope they're all super nice this week, though. It's got to be. Bike Vault, let's get into it. Got this one kicking it off from Michael on his 2019 Specialised Levo. That's cool. It almost looks like a little sort of slalomy bike. Yeah, doesn't it? Seat slammed like that. Yeah. Cool, uh, okay. Well, I mean, that's got to be super nice. That's in Nortalje, Sweden. Probably not pronounced that right at all. Nice. It's going for a quick ride before the family wakes up. Get cool. out in the morning. Give it a super nice. Sweet. Straight in there with super nice. Christian with his 2017 high bike or mountain. Uh, out in Tyrol in Austria. Nice. Well, I mean, that looks good, doesn't it? You've got nice. to be up, getting up with some good downhill tracks up there. Nice colours, I didn't see too many in that. Uh, it said, we, me and my wife uh, went for a nice bike ride. Unfortunately, mm. we didn't reach the summit. But yeah. this is the Wilder Kaiser. In the nice. That's look, it's got to be another one, right? Go on, then, boo. Super nice. Cool. Oh, this isn't from Gary on his Focus Sam Squared 6.8. Another one from South Wales in Kumkar. Well, I guess it looks like Kumkar in the background. You can oh, tell the yeah. blue sky's kind of disappeared. <laughs> the clouds are coming in. You've got to be in Wales. Boom. What are yes. we saying? Nice. Okay. Nice. Right, nice. Whoa, Whoa, look at that. YT. Yeah, this is uh, Javier with his YT decoy pro race, the high end one. Look He's out in the snowshoe, mm -hmm. uh, snowshoe resort, West Virginia, USI World Cup finals. That's yeah, where it was just nice. week. One thing ruining that picture for me, and that is something in the back wheel oh. pedals. And that sign in the back wheel, just I, kind of. I think they're a cool looking bike. They're kind of on the chunkier side, aren't they, the white yeah. tees? But yeah, it's good. What are you thinking? Uh, has it got those Revit grips on there as well? Do you know? Looks like it, yeah, yeah. Oh, with the grips that turn slightly. Yeah. It's that stop arm pump, right? Yeah, apparently they're really good for, yeah, on the like really rough <laughs> things. You just, you know, your hands will slide around. Just undo your lock on collar a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> True. What are you thinking? <laughs> nice. 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 Cool, this is Dave with his YT Decoy Pro Race again. Where is that? San Diego, check that out. Wow, that's nice. nice. Look at that. Um, yeah, loving his new bike, but it looks a bit. Dave, out How getting some climbing in. How buildings are in the background, way up in the sky. I mean, we've just given another decoy a nice. But I kind of feel in the background on this. It's got to be, a, it's got to be a super nice. 
Jonas, uh, he's got his Canyon Spectral on 7.0. West Flanders, Flanders, Belgium. That's that cyclocross territory, isn't it? Not e-bike territory. Kind of looks like a cyclocross track in the background. Uh, my first e-bike ride without mountain bike experience at the age mm -hmm. of 27. Went very well uh, with all your tips on the channel. Nice, thank you. Uh, I did some racing sections and my first obstacle. I had to kind of overcome some kind of fear now. Uh, nice. It's good. It's got to be nice, I think. Nice. Whoa, this is nice. So this is Martin with his high bike Esduro 3.0. Yeah, this in Canic Chase, mm. one of my old uh, sort of haunts. You've got all the KOMs, woods. eh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I bet I haven't. <laughs> Martin may have on his Esduro 3.0. <laughs> what do you reckon? Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Yeah. Whoa, a bit of a different Canivo. angle. Yeah, it's Darren with his Canivo. Sherwood Forest in the UK, exploring what's on my doorstep. A monster stand, is it? The is that, stump. I think that's up. attached to the bike, a kickstand. So. Yeah, it looks Probably. like it. Bit of a funky angle going on, can't quite see it. it makes the front tire look massive. Yeah, doesn't it? It looks like a 35 inch tire on the front. Nice bike. Yeah, nice. Oh. Whoa. This is in from David, Giant Trance E plus three. In Maud's or Heath Causeway, Chippenham. Mm. That's not so far from here. Do you no, know that? Not. It's a bridal way overlooking the Avon Valley in Chippenham. Mm -hmm. Nice. He says you don't need to, David says you don't need to go to the Alps for a mini adventure. No, exactly. Absolutely. That looks cool. It's nice. Nice. And the last one, this Whoa. is coming in from Jamie on his 2019 LMX 64. It looks like a custom kind of build. Do you know, I don't know these bikes. It's kind of got a high pivot on there as mm -hmm. well. Looks like a big bat. Oh no, it's got that Shimano. Is that Shimano battery? It, looks like it sort it. of looks like it. Yeah. It's hard to know what's in there. Like a custom build. I've not seen one of those before. Um, got a Manitou stitch fork up front. It's definitely unusual. Lots of cables going on there. Mm, I'd like to see a bit more info on that bike. Yeah, if you can get in touch. It looks interesting for sure. Well, what were you thinking? I think it's super nice. Super nice. Oh. Nice. Don't forget, if you want to be featured on the Bike Vault, use the upload service. Could be you next week's show. So that's it for this week's show. Thanks a lot, Don, for joining us. No worries. Cheers, dude. Uh, and for the viewers, if you want to check out some of the EMBM merch, like the beautiful T-shirt that Chris is modeling there, head over to the shop. That'd be wicked. Yeah, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Drop some comments in the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to EMBM by clicking the globe in the middle of the screen. And hit over there for the ultimate e-bike descent with uh, Fabian Burrell.